Today we're going to talk about assessment of the nerve as it courses through its track all the way down to the hand, trying to figure out where exactly this nerve could be potentially entrapped or tensioned. Max Wardell, OverheadAthletics.com. I'm actually joined by Max here, stud infielder. We're going to look at his nerve. We're going to do some nerve tension testing. And we're going to actually figure out, okay, if we have somebody that has problems here or has pain down to the hand from the elbow or even from the shoulder around the neck, how can we actually figure out where that source is, where it's coming from? Let's hold on for one second here and talk about what's the maximal nerve tension position for the ulnar nerve. That's what's bothered in a lot of throwers, irritated. So that nerve is maximally tensioned with side bending and rotation of the cervical spine away, depression of the clavicle, elevation and horizontal abduction at the shoulder, elbow flexion, wrist extension, finger extension, and here's the position. So if we want to assess this nerve and we've taken the spine through active range of motion, we've taken the shoulder, elbow, et cetera, et cetera, through active range of motion, we've found that it didn't provoke the symptoms. It was provoked by throwing. What we can do is use a nerve tension test preliminary assessment to actually find out or to start to localize where this pain or these symptoms are coming from. So what we like to do is we put them in this maximal nerve tension position as much as they can tolerate. Then we slacken through the cervical spine, slacken next through the clavicular portion and down through the extremity, slackening sequentially. Wherever the symptoms disappear or where the symptoms go away, we know that's the segment that's involved or the specific location that things are involved. Why? Because we've slackened above. If I still have pain down through the arm, after I've slackened through the cervical spine, we can be pretty sure that compression or tethering of the nerve is happening distally. So what then I can do is do the next segment, slacken through the clavicular, clavicular portion, am I still having symptoms? If symptoms persist, I go to the next segment. If they go away, then I say, okay, it was obvious that it wasn't something tensioned above, but it was something tensioned from here down. Well, it must have been tensioned here because that's where things were compressed. So I've just found out or I've start to find out where these things are compressed then I can come back and actually assess and, and reassess and make sure what I'm seeing is correct. So what I do is I tension above and I tension below. I get the arm into that position with an elevated shoulder if we're thinking it's thoracic outlet syndrome in this case. And then I can depress the clavicle last. If that provokes the symptoms, I can alleviate by lifting the shoulder up. If it goes away, once again, I've confirmed that it's something in this area. Now, if I really want to look into this a little deeper, what I can do here is put the extremity in a slackened position below, put the neck or cervical spine in a slackened position, and then depress the clavicle. If that provokes the symptoms, I'm thinking there's a compression related issue and maybe it's sensitive to stretch and tension, but really what's going on is there's a little nerve sandwich happening between the first rib and the clavicle here that's provoking symptoms. So it could just be that the nerve and the plexus is sensitive to stretch all the way through and in which case if I slacken any extremity joint or I slacken through the cervical spine, that should alleviate the symptoms because if the nerve in general is just aggravated, I can utilize any sort of alleviation and that should get rid of it. And that might be if the nerve is just sensitive to tensile load. But when the nerve is specifically tensioned or tensioned in a specific area, I can then say, all right, well, let's find exactly where that is. And now what I've done here is I've said, all right, I've found exactly where that nerve is tensioned, and I can always go back and use some differential diagnosis techniques. Maybe if it's in the thoracic outlet syndrome area, I'm doing some palpation of pec minor, assessing for tightness. I'm going through the scalene triangle here, assessing for some tension. Wherever it is, I'm gonna use some other tests. If that's in the cervical spine, I might, I might do a little bit of a doorbell testing on the spinal nerve roots, or I might do a little play with the ulnar nerve if I think it's coming from the cubital tunnel. 
regardless of what I see here, I can go into those further techniques, but this is my first line. Once again, to recap, what we found here was it's sensitive to stretch. It wasn't provoked with active range of motion. I'm sensitive to stretch here. I alleviate or I slacken proximally and I keep tension distally and wherever those symptoms decrease at that segment, whether that's through the elbow, the wrist, the cervical spine, the shoulder, that's where I'm suspecting that the symptoms are coming from and that I can go back and confirm by moving that segment last. I'm Max Wardell. Thanks for watching this video. If you like this content and you want to see more of our differential diagnosis techniques, make sure to subscribe and hit the like button and we'll see you in the next video.